welcome to Grace Life Church Podcast. If you would like any more information about us, please visit our website, gracelife.com.au. At the end of my message, we're also going to have a time of communion. So if you could be ready for uh, that, if you're at home or if you're uh, watching on uh, Facebook or YouTube, just go grab yourself a cookie or a or a bread, or, or a bit of juice, or something, and we're going to have communion together. Um, but as I um, just start, I want to, if I can, just a couple quick announcements, just let you know, obviously Vision Sunday is not today, we're postponing that, possibly another two weeks. Well, we didn't want to have a Vision Sunday, if possible, if we could just delay it by a little bit, and have us all together as a family here in Perth, we wanted to pre- you know, uh, prioritise that. So pay attention to Vision Sunday, where we all come together, it'll still be here, we're just working out the finer details. Also to let you know that we have our ladies event which has been cancelled for now and also our seniors event which was scheduled this week, it's cancelled for now. This is life group week as well and life groups may look a little bit differently, they may, they will look a little bit, some life groups may choose to not meet this week, some life groups may meet but um, um, you know taking care of social distancing and also the masks, but other people may choose to zoom it in as we used to a number of months ago. Pay attention to your life group leader to give you direction on that for this week. Cool beans? Okay, let's get into it. Let's go straight to John chapter 16. John chapter 16, if you will, please. I'll be reading from the English Standard Let me just turn there as I make a meal of this water bottle up here. John chapter 16. You got it? Wonderful. Okay, so just to... Jesus, just before he is betrayed and crucified, he is with his disciples... And there isn't long left. And what Jesus is doing here is he is starting to tell them a little bit about the future and what's to come. If you go a couple of chapters before to John chapter 14, he talks about the promise that comes, the Holy Spirit. He talks, John chapter 14, John chapter 16, fantastic passages to get a good understanding, a good understanding of the Holy Spirit. Go to those two chapters. In John chapter 15 and then 16, he's talking about some troubles that are going to actually come and that he's basically saying, the world is going to hate you, stuff's going to happen, but it's going to be okay, I've got to go, but I need to go. And when I go, it's for your advantage because when I go, though you will miss me, I'm going to send you someone who's that's going to send you the Holy Spirit. It was to the advantage of the disciples that Jesus was to leave. He was their Messiah. He was there with them, but there was only one of him. Jesus was not omnipresent. Jesus needed to go for the advantage of his disciples to not just have his presence with them, but their presence, his presence in them. So the, it's to your advantage, and I'm going to send you my spirit. And that spirit is going to come to live in you. I want you to know, friends, that you cannot know Jesus except by the Holy Spirit. A dead person cannot be born again except by the Holy Spirit. A deaf person cannot hear except by the Holy Spirit. A blind person cannot see except by the Holy Spirit. The precious Holy Spirit, who is often like the middle child of the family, can often get missed, can often be forgotten. But Jesus right now is seated at the right hand of the Father and we have His presence on the earth, not just with us, but in us. And this is what Jesus starts to say in verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper... That's a name. He is a helper. That's a name of the Holy Spirit. The helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin 
righteousness, and judgment. Who will convict the world? Christians. No, Christians don't do that. Let the Holy Spirit do it. The Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment concerning sin because they don't believe in me, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you'll see me no longer, concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Verse 12, I still have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify Me, for He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is Mine. Therefore I said that He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. Here we have Jesus um, conversing with his disciples and pointing to the beauty of the Trinity between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. They're together. They're one. They're distinct. They're not separate. They are different, but they're together. They're one. There is power in that oneness. Have you, Laura, just read out to us over the microphone the message version for that passage. Actually, so go from verse uh, 12, please. Yeah. Um, When he comes, he'll expose the error of the godless world's view of sin, righteousness and judgment. He'll show them that their refusal to believe in me is their basic sin, that righteousness comes the Father out of their sight and control, that judgment takes place as the ruler of this godless world is brought to trial and convicted. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't handle them now. When the friend comes, the spirit of truth, he will take you by the hand and guide you into the truth that there is. He won't draw attention to himself, but he will make sense out of what is about to happen and indeed out of all that I have done and said. He will take from me and deliver it to you. Everything the Father has is also mine. That is why I've said he takes from me and delivers to you. In a day or so, you're not going to see me, but then in another day or so, you will see me. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to give you three things that jumped out at me as I'm preparing this to share with you. And I want to start in verse 12. I think we started there from verse 7, but that's okay. We've got a good run up there. Verse 12, Jesus says, I still have you, but you cannot bear them now. That's really important for us as believers. Why is that? Well, because God reveals in relation to our readiness. Have you ever felt like you just want God to do things for you now and he want, you want him to show you things now in this moment, but there's some sort of delay? Well, we've got to trust God's timing. We've got to trust him. We need to know when he feels we're ready for it. That's what God will do. Why? Because our father is a good dad. He's really good. He doesn't want spoiled brats. He'll tell you what he wants you to know at the appropriate time. Any parents here, you know that at times you can't tell your kids everything. My kids are at this stage constantly asking why, 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 why? I twitch. It's happening this morning as I'm just praying into this message. Why, Dad? Yeah, but why? Why can't I walk out to the car? Down the road. But, and this is this morning, just before I'm about to get up to preach. Yeah, but I left my water bottle in the car. No, it's, it's too late. No, Dad, why? Yeah, but why? Why can't I go? What if I get grace to go? No, just... Always asking, why, why, why? Listen, I don't have time for this right now, Esther. You should have had your stuff sorted out earlier. We got church service starting. Okay, Dad. Now, in this case, our Father knows where we're at. Handle. I'm not just talking about parents breaking the news about Santa Claus, whether he's real or not, whether they can handle that bit of truth. There are certain truths I can't tell my kids right now because their maturity does not allow them to handle it. Stuff about the world, atrocities that I see and hear about. Their poor little hearts at this stage, at varying ages, can only handle certain things. And our Father is so good to us that He often would revelation in waves. Think about Christ Jesus. When Jesus was born, did He know at that very instant that his mission was to die think about that no as the child developed in wisdom it says the child in Luke we can read that Jesus as he grew as a human he was learning about his father who his father really learned 
about his mission on earth. He would have learned at a certain point about his appointment to die on a cross. He would have learned all this. How would he have learned that? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And a spoiler alert for each and every one of us. Right now, we do not know everything. We only know in part. There will come a time, and we've got to be patient about that for those people that like to know everything. There will come a time where God will reveal everything to us when he says it's ready. And particularly when that which is perfect has come, we'll know everything. I look forward to that. There are things happening in and around this world right now, and we want the answers for it. Unfortunately, you're not always going to get it. (laughs) I'm trying to build this veggie garden at home, and my girls are keen as mustard to get this veggie garden going. And so we've gone to Bunnings, buy little pot plants, wasting a few bucks out of Dad's pocket. But the soil's not ready. We've got to make the soil right first. We've got to get some more nutrients to put in that soil. Because there's a reason why that strawberry plant just died. The soil wasn't ready. In the same way, God looks at the soils of our hearts. He says, hang on, son. Hang on, daughter. There's some work I want to do first. There's some things I want to teach you so that when my seed is deposited in you, it will bring good fruit. So here's to not rushing God. And here's to making the most. Let's read on. In verse 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He'll do it. He will do it. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. So what does it tell us? It tells us we get our insight and our foresight from Holy Spirit. Where do we get our insight and our foresight from? Insight is understanding in the present. What's really going on here? That's insight. That's the Holy Spirit will guide you. He'll show it to you. What's foresight? Foresight is what's going to come. How's it going to look? So pay attention. Pay attention to Holy Spirit. Don't pay attention to Google News too much. Don't pay attention to Facebook so much. Don't pay attention to Twitter so much. Don't do it. Pay attention. Jesus says, it's for your advantage that I go because then I can send you the helper or the advocate or the paraclete. He will come to you and he's going to give you some insight. And the insight that he gives you, the world doesn't have access to it. Because the world doesn't have me. And not only are you going to get insight, he is going to give you foresight. And so as believers, we've got to pay attention to what has our attention. What's got your attention? What's informing your ideology? What's informing your theology? If you let the world do it, the enemy will exploit the fear. Of the people. And we'll end up like headless chooks. And at the end of the day, these two things tend to happen. This is what the enemy's goal is. A distortion of the truth and a distraction from the truth. Is the spirit of truth. True truth is in him. And Satan wants to distort the truth and distract from the truth. So... What's the encouragement for us? This is why I think it is so incredibly important to have a rhythm of grace with God, even in prayer where we've got our masks on, but we breathe Him in exhale. Lord, I take my fleshly, limited mind off and I put on the mind of Christ and I need your Holy Spirit to help me in this situation. Lord, I don't know I'm going to pay the bills. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to deal with these issues in my heart. I don't know how I'm going to, how, how, how am I going to, and the Holy Spirit, he will help you to pray. He will give you insight and foresight. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit, you talk about um, uh, revelation. The Holy Spirit, 10, 15 years ago, he didn't give me the full game plan of what ministry would look like back then. He kind of snookered me. I loved him. My life belonged to him. And I felt him tap me on the shoulder to step forward in ministry. And, and, and the willing child in me says, yeah, I'll do it, Lord, if that's what you want. I'll do it. But he didn't show me what would, to, what, what would still happen over the years moving forward, how easy it would be. 
He didn't do that. He didn't. There's every chance that if he showed me back then what was shown to me now, I don't know how my heart could have taken all that. God often does that for our own good. As he gives you a word, he does it in his timing and then he gives you grace to achieve it. He gives you So let's not pay attention to what's going on around us too much. Be in the world, but not of the world. It doesn't take a scientist to know that our world is mucked up at the moment. You don't need to be a rocket scientist for that. Governments are changing hands. We hear what's happening in Europe. Hear what's happening in Africa. Hear what's happening all over the place. Leaders are being shuffled. Why not? I mean, that in and of itself is, is interesting. I mean, the world's turned on its head with this pandemic. Fear is gripping the place. That in and of itself, I mean, that's really interesting. Not to mention things like plagues um, of locusts and, 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 I mean, things happening all over the shop. And people are looking for hope. And we as Christians, we've got to understand that our rock, Jesus, you know that, right? And in James, we know that God, God is this He's immovable. He casts no shifting shadows. Looking at this last week, um, when we left the service here in Malaga, we got news that there was going to be a lockdown of either three days or five days. I'm thinking, oh, geez, what are we going to do? Okay, well, my wife Kylie was at the shops and she says it's chaos here. Chaos. Everyone's rushed to the shops. There's hardly... And I, I, just, I just took the kids out for lunch, to be honest with you. I mean, oh, it'll be okay. It'll be all right. We then went on the way home just to pick up, I think I'd get the kids like a Sunday or um, get them a, um, a slushie. And then I went to a shopping center and it was, it was queues everywhere. I think, wow, this is really interesting. What is that? Well, people are panicking. We, 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 we don't want to miss out. We want to make sure we got enough toilet roll. Really important to last us for the next few days. We need enough. We need enough. I get it. Right? Really important. What it is is people are, well, hang on, hang on, there's nothing. What, 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 what is there a scarcity of? I need that. I need that. And, and, and notice that our prayers started to change. The newspaper articles started to change. The journalism started to change. All of a sudden, there is a case in WA, and all of a sudden, we've lost our heads. I'm talking about Christians. Now, Christians, what, what, what I'm here to tell you is that our peace doesn't pay attention to what's going on, absolutely. But our peace and our joy and our life, it comes from God. And we stand on Him. Have a guess what? Things are going to continue to happen and we've got to make sure that we have the maturity and the revelation that Jesus is building His church on Himself and the gates of Hades will not prevail. And so precious hob best friend, He often calms me right down. Calm down, kiddo. Calm down, son. God speaks to me by His Spirit. The precious person and presence of the Holy Spirit, nothing can compare. If you are feeling inside this inner turmoil or this restlessness, this unsettledness, learn to practice the presence of God by the Holy Spirit. Come and say, God, here I am. I'm here for you. Turn your phone off. Turn the distractions off. Just... Spirit, I need you. And he gives you words. He gives you encouragement. He shows you pictures of the future. He gives you insight. He gives you foresight. Keep your eyes on him. I was um, talking in the uh, prayer group just on Monday, I think it was. And I was just sharing. <laughs> Last times I was on a boat uh, was about 11 years ago. Can I show this picture up, please? <laughs> that's a picture if you can't see the zoomers in there um, there's a picture of me and that's at Mike Bazidis' Bucks Party do you remember that fateful day my friend that was Mike's Bucks, Bucks Party and um, that's <laughs> look at look at <laughs> that's before we went out on the boat <laughs> and so um, we went out on the boat, and it was just it was just a sailboat out at Hillary's. And I tell you now, I have never felt so much sickness before. 
in my life. Like I was vomiting and vomiting and I was vomiting till there was nothing. It was like a fluoro green stuff coming out. It was horrible. I'm, I, I, I feel for mothers when they go through pregnancy and they feel this nausea. I got off to you. I had, I had a few minutes of it. It felt like a few years, but it was just a few minutes. And so when I was on that boat ride, I went to, um, uh, I was told by the guy that's the, the, the captain of the boat, he goes, oh, look, just, just, go, down, just go down into the boat. And, um, and so I did that, you know, and I, there was a bed down there, so I just kind of lied, and I was encouraged just to look out the window and look at the horizon. Well, looking at the horizon is supposed to be helpful. What, what, why is that? Look, it helped me. I, I kept vomiting. It calmed me down a little bit, but you know what it did? The horizon was the only constant in that moment. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? In and around us every day, we're going to have these moments of being tossed to and fro. Look at the constant. The more we fix our eyes on Jesus, the easier it becomes. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, can we go there please? Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every white and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Our spouses, looking to our kids, looking to our parents, looking to the internet, looking to the newspapers, looking to the TV, looking to the media. Look, No, look to Jesus. The founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And it's so important to look to Jesus because in Jesus, we cannot honor Jesus. That goes on to the next point. Let's read on. I'll finish with this. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A great passion of the Holy Spirit is to give glory to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the one who leads us to Jesus, who leads us to the person of Christ and glorifies Him. It is a great joy of the Spirit, honor Jesus. And as we share in this incredible life with Holy Spirit, we honor Him. We joyfully give Him praise. Why is it that in worship, We feel a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment as we're giving Him praise and honor. Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit, we are completing a a wonderful act, a wonderful mission that the Holy Spirit says, come, let us adore Him. That's why we feel the way that we do. Your eyes on Jesus, always giving Him honor and giving Him glory no matter what happens in the world. No matter what happens, who knows? We might leave today and there's another case. And then we lock down the whole state for two weeks. Who knows? It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Why? Because Jesus is on the throne. He's not surprised by any of this. He's not rocked. He is the rock. He knows what's going on. So point Christward. Why? Because it's all about about Jesus. Always. It's always been about Jesus. He is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. This whole thing has always been about the finished completed work of the cross accomplished by the Son of God, enabled by the Holy Spirit to, for the glory of God the Father. Go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that's above every name so that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This morning as we finish, I want to spend some time in communion. Partnering with the Spirit to reflect upon the finished work of the cross and enjoying Jesus together. We'll do that as well at home wherever you're streaming in from. Just spending some time enjoying Jesus. And then what we're going to do after that is we're just going to spend some time asking Holy Spirit to lead us in prayer and in the prophetic. We've got some time. We've got some time. 
And perhaps you're here this morning, and um, if it's a picture of, from God, or if it's a scripture from God, or if it's a song from God, it's okay. Give it a run this morning. I want to open the door a little bit more. And um, let's see what God can do. If you've got your communion, why don't you get that? I'll give you just a minute at home to grab yourself communion, and we're going to finish together. Okay, I can hear the wrappers opening. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23, thanks. Just before we um, take the communion, it's what we remember. Paul writes to the Corinthian church, he says, hey, I received from the Lord Jesus what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed and given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body. So we've got wafers this morning. I don't know what you've got at home, but we've got wafers. He says, this is my body, and it's for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance. You eat this bread and drink the cup. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. What this is, is a proclamation of the cross. We are proclaiming what was accomplished for us. He did it all. He did it. We right now as believers stand positively righteous. We stand forgiven, set free. We're living right now in liberty. Right now, in the heavenly realms, we are free. Whether you feel like God's sight, we're free. Because of what Jesus has done for us. Because of what He's done. And so this morning, we're just going to have a moment to look to Jesus and thank Him. Can we do that? Lord, we we take this, um, this wafer, this bread, this biscuit, whatever it might be today, and we look to You we say thank you for your body which was broken in a sense you were put on a cross you were laughed at you were mocked you took on sin and shame for us thank you so much words can't express really it can't do it justice right now Lord we just remember you and we declare the finished work that you did for us. When you're ready, why don't you just grab that wafer and thank him. The juice is a representation of blood, the loss of blood, symbolic of life that was sacrificed for us. Represents the covenant of grace. Undeserved goodness. He did it. We thank you so much. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When you're ready, why don't you just drink that cup? Thank you, Lord. You know, he is so good to us. He is so good. I've asked the gents just to sing a very simple song that was written some time ago. If you want to sit there and just enjoy time with Holy Spirit, you can do that. If you want to sing, you can. And then when this finishes, we're just going to launch off into some prayer and prophetic together. We hope you've enjoyed listening to this podcast from Grace Life Church. For more information about us or any of our services, please visit our website at gracelife.com.au.